Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, web TCI webinar, Leadership and Dealing with Crew Conflict. In order to be an effective leader, you need to understand your own strengths and weaknesses, and you need to leverage your strengths when dealing with conflict on your crew. <clears throat> So uh, this webinar series is a free CU webinar series that TCIA is putting on. Um, we felt like we wanted to uh, offer free CEUs to um, commercial tree care companies and other arborists uh, as a way to uh, give back to our members and help them through this uh, current period. And we're also looking at uh, ways we can improve our virtual and online offerings for the future. So I'd just like to go over some rules and guidelines uh, for today's webinar. Uh, we, your audio is muted as you enter. We do keep the audio muted to uh, address ambient sounds and other things that can happen. Uh, if you have a question, you can simply go into the uh, control bar and depending on what kind of device you have, you may need to go into the spot where it says more. And in that uh, spot, either in the bar or in the more tab, uh, there'll be a chat feature and you can click on that chat. Um, as we're going through the workshop, if you have a question, uh, put it in the chat. And uh, the results of points where uh, Skip uh, Kincaid, our today's instructor, may be asking you questions and you can uh, put any answers you have in that chat as well. Um, so that's designed to be the uh, it, an interactive feature for you to use. There's also an option in there where you can raise your hand if you have a question. We're not, uh, we may not be able to get to all questions, but certainly if you have a question and you feel it's important, raise your hand uh, so we can see that. Um, so right now I'd like to uh, introduce a little bit more about the webinar and today's speaker. So the webinar itself is uh, based on our crew leader certificate workshop. Uh, what we've done for these webinars is chunked up pieces of the workshop into smaller parts so we could provide them online and, um, uh, and try to give you a flavor of what that crew leader workshop is all about. Uh, the crew leader workshop itself uh, is a one day workshop uh, for design for crew leaders. Uh, it's designed for new crew leaders. It's designed for older crew leaders who just want to refresh some of their skills. And it's designed for trainers who might just want to learn a little bit more about uh, uh, how to help their crew leaders do a better job. Um, and we also have owners who are in the same position, uh, owners of small companies who want to learn a little more and get some tips on how to uh, help uh, their crew leaders improve and uh, become the best crew leaders they can. So it's a really great workshop. We encourage you to take a look at it. It's very interactive. And uh, this has been a fun experiment to try to put them online and see how we can make it interactive online in a webinar format. Um, so right now I'd like to introduce Skip Kincaid uh, Skip is one of our approved crew leader workshop instructors. Skip is currently the executive director with the Southern Chapter of ISA and also the director of urban forestry at Hanson's Tree Care in O'Fallon, Missouri. Skip shares information about many tree care topics with a wide audience that includes anyone willing to listen and learn. He's committed to providing useful for the hospital to take over. Okay, so Bob, yeah, your audio was breaking up there. Uh, I think Kenji's pointing that out, but hopefully we're, we're in good shape. And I'm assuming you want me to go ahead and start sharing my, my screen. So I will do that, and I think we're good to go. How's that working out? Let's looks good, to... Skip. It looks like you just need to start the slideshow. Yep, I'm seeing we'll get your to PowerPoint. That, and I think there we're we there. All Great. right. And I can Welcome. hear you. Great. 
Yeah. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, webinars seem to be all the rage right now, and of course, there's a, a good reason for that. I hope everyone um, is healthy and safe, and um, I hope they're they're working. I hope everybody's working, and I hope you're working safe. Um, you know, I know a lot of the crews and a lot of the companies that I've been dealing with, um, people are still staying busy. You know, a lot of us are considered essential services, so we're, we're cranking it out, but uh, lots of adjustments, you know, to keep all the workers safe, keep everybody safe, keep our clients safe, keep the public safe. Um, on top of all of our normal work safe practices that we do. So um, I hope everybody's doing well. And, um, you know, for those of you that aren't all that familiar with this whole crew leader qualification, you know, a lot of it is built around what we call the soft skills. You know, a lot of this isn't how to operate a piece of equipment or the technical aspects of tree biology and and, and so forth. These are more the softer skills, the people skills. And, um, you know, like a lot of things in life, it's something that a lot of times we don't talk about. We just kind of try to get through it and, and learn from what goes on. You know, many of us have learned about being a crew leader and, or being an effective leader by watching others that aren't so good at it. And unfortunately, it's a good way to learn. You know, we, we see what others do and uh, either we want to, um, you know, model their behavior or we learn from their bad behavior. So um, in that vein, you know, this whole qualification that TCIA has set up is, is meant to just to kind of give you a, a roadmap or some guidance on becoming a good crew leader and making sure that you can motivate your crew to be productive, to be safe, um, and, you know, to do good things. Uh, it sounds very simple, but that's, that's the truth. Uh, objectives for today over the next hour, um, you know, we'll talk about one of the primary things about being a good leader is, is just setting a good example. Um, everybody in life, whether you're a, a dominant alpha, you know, leader uh, type of person or whether you're a little more quiet style leader, um, you know, a, a lot of us like to be a good example to others. And so we're, we're going to cover that just a little bit. Uh, we're going to make sure that uh, you understand the idea that being a good leader means that you share the company's goals and that you share your goals and your expectations with the crew. Everybody wants to do good things, but sometimes they can't if they don't understand what the goal is or what the expectations are. So we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about how to keep the crew happy, how to keep morale good. Um, everybody works better at when, when they're happy. The, the day goes better. The work is higher quality. And people stay more focused uh, uh, you know, to safety when, when, they're, they're, when their morale is good. Uh, and we'll talk about ways to keep crew members focused and, and performing to the best of their ability. Um, We'll talk about how we can delegate tasks to crew members to keep them motivated, keep them happy, keep them working, and to keep them in a learning mode. Uh, no matter how experienced they are or we are, there's always something to learn. So if we delegate effectively, we keep everyone in a learning mode and it just keeps everyone more uh, attentive to, to, to getting the job done well. And you know, the, some of the uncomfortable things. We'll talk a little bit about resolving crew conflicts. You know, we talked about trying to keep people happy, but you know, the honest truth is sometimes people are just a little ticked off and they're carrying a chip to work. Um, and we'll talk about how to deal with some of those conflicts that might arise uh, during the day. So, you know, again, just very basic introductory stuff. As a crew leader, you are responsible for these items. You know, you're, you're obviously, you are responsible for your crew safety. Um, you know, tree work, we all know, tree work is a very dangerous profession, very dangerous industry. Safety is, is absolutely key. I learned this early on in, in my 
career when I, you know, was working out West on Western fires and, you know, and I was a crew leader for some of those fires. And this is before I even got into urban tree work and, you know, getting out, getting the fire out was obviously a big deal, but safety was a bigger deal. So uh, we were very focused. So I, I learned that lesson early. Um, that's your number one priority. Uh, another priority, of course, is morale. It's kind of your responsibility to make sure everybody is locked into the job, locked into the team and the, the, the job that the team has to do. We have to make sure that they're locked into productivity. Well, again, we want them safe. We want them happy. Um, they got to produce. You know, if they don't produce, company doesn't make money, company doesn't stay in business, and things fall apart. People lose jobs. Um, even in the public sector, you know, we got to be productive. We got to spend tax dollars wisely and, uh, and, and maintain productivity. And we want to do quality work. We want to make sure that the work that we're doing is something that we're proud of. Not just the work on the tree itself, but the respect for the property, the respect for the client and the public. Uh, make sure that our quality is absolutely exemplary. That'll sell more work for you in the future. Absolutely. So this idea about explaining goals and expectations to um, your team and your, your crew, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, everybody wants to do a good job, but, but they can't unless they understand what the true vision of the job is in the, in the, in the day's uh, assignment. And in, in, in the bigger perspective, what the vision of the company is. You know, where, where is this company going? Where are we going as a, as, a, as a business entity? Where are we going in terms of uh, adding more clients, adding more crews, adding equipment, updating our equipment, becoming smarter? You know, make sure that you have a clear vision and make sure that you share that vision with your employees. And I mean down to the, down to the detail. Um, the more buy-in that crew members have, the more they will help you achieve those goals and achieve that vision. So make sure that you spend time sharing that with them. But just as importantly, um, you know, I, I don't want to compare crew members to kids because they certainly aren't kids, but we all know that when we raise children, um, children do best when they know where the boundaries are. And, and it's the same with us, even as adults. Um, I like to, I like to stretch those boundaries, but I like to know where they are. So share what those boundaries are with your crew. Literally share the physical boundaries. Here's the client's property. Um, we are tasked with doing this job. We cannot do this, we cannot do that. Let, let folks know what those boundaries are. Let them know what their levels of responsibility are and how far they can go with making decisions without checking back with you as the crew leader. So clear boundaries and clearly defined boundaries are important. And of course, clear instructions. As you're, as you're describing those boundaries, make sure that you're being very clear with instructions. One of, one of my biggest frustrations in life, um, and, it, and it, a lot of times it has to do with dealing with contractors that I hire to do work for me in, in various things that I do, is that um, I hear them talking to their crew members and their crew members really don't hear what, what I thought they should hear. So it's because they weren't giving clear instructions. So make sure that if you have a good work order from your sales staff, and that's another whole topic, um, <laughs> but make sure that you are giving very clear instructions to your crew members. Make sure there are few questions that they will need to ask. You know, it's the old adage of don't give instructions that can be uh, uh, understood or, or misunderstood. Give instructions or don't don't give instructions that can be understood, give instructions that cannot be misunderstood. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Make sure that the instructions are very clear and that they are, um, um, you know, they, they have very clear direction. They, they work much better without having to think about what needs to be done. And, and that falls right into this next topic, the whole idea of crew morale. If the crew has very clear expectations, they know the boundary, they know the job task, they know the assignment, 
They know what their responsibilities are to carry out that assignment. Morale is going to be good. You know, people will be very happy about getting through their day. You know, it, it's, it's physical work. It's arduous work that we do. It's hot. It's cold. It's, you know, we run into poison ivy. We run into bees. There's all kinds of problems. We're, we're 60 feet in the air uh, with, with chainsaws attached to us. Um, you know, this is hard stuff. So in order to keep morale high, we need to make sure that these, these visions, these instructions and, and all that are very clear. Um, if we're not clear, this poor morale, if people begin to get unhappy or frustrated, um, their productivity goes down. They start snapping at people, you know, we get conflicts. Um, they may not last on the job. They may just say, hey, this isn't for me. I'm, I'm either going to another company or I'm going to go sell insurance. You know, I'm, I'm getting an office job. Um, so turnover is no good. You know, we, we then wasted all of that time that we spent trying to train and mold this individual to be a, a productive employee. If, if they don't leave, they may start missing work days. And, you know, one of, one of the other bad things is, of course, they become an unsafe employee. So keep morale high. Do the things that you need to do to keep morale high. Um, one of the things that keeping morale high helps with is this idea of uh, maintaining respect uh, and appreciation for the other crew members that, that they're working with. Um, you know, we look at this slide and, of course, it looks to me like maybe they're doing a little bit of lion tailing here, but at least they feel good about it. <laughs> so... Um, you know, if, if crew members are respected, uh, not only by the crew leader, but by other members, if you create an environment to nurture that respect and appreciation of one another, um, it's going to go a long way. And again, some of these things are very soft skills. They sound very um, pie in the sky, almost unrealistic. But I, I can tell you from firsthand experience, if you create an environment of, of respect and appreciation of one another, that is a huge foundation to, to keep the crew focused. Um, that positive attitude is infectious. The positive attitude doesn't have to be to the point of <laughs> being obnoxious to other people. Sometimes being too positive can drive people nuts. But find, find that sweet spot. Find that place where you have a positive can-do attitude and you treat people with respect and appreciation, and it will be returned. I, I can guarantee you that it will be returned. Uh, it just creates this nice, tight-knit tight -knit unit. You won't have to be continually barking orders at, at crew members to do certain things. They're just going to do it, and they're, they're going to look like a well-rehearsed you know, ballet or symphony as they get it done. It's, it's just all going to click and happen. And I realize that doesn't happen all the time, but this positive attitude can go a long, long way. And that, that comes from this idea of respect and appreciation and treating people fairly. The comment, and I, and I dwell on this quite a bit during the class when we do these, these classes live, we, you know, I, I go into this whole idea of treating other people, and, and this may come as a shock to a lot of you, but treating other people as if they're people, as if they're humans. While, while they are a tool for you to get things done and, and to, to be productive, if you treat them as human beings, that they may have certain issues and certain things going on that day, but you still expect production, you know, you, you treat them fairly and treat everyone the same, you know, and embrace this idea of diversity, it's amazing what you'll be able to accomplish. So, so that, that, that one rule, treat humans as though they are humans. And I don't want to go too much into, a, into John Prine quotes because I know he just passed away. and Some people might be tired of hearing about it. But, you know, some, some people ain't human, you know, um, because they don't treat other people as humans. So make sure you're not one of those people. Treat, treat other people fairly, and it, and it, will, it will pay huge dividends. Um, when those things don't happen, you can really demotivate a crew and you can start to create fractures and problems and issues. Um, 
being a poor supervisor and treating people unfairly will demotivate people very, very quickly. If people have to come to work every day and listen to conflicts between other employees, whether it's the supervisor and an employee or between other employees or between you and another employee, it just creates issues. So we're going to talk about conflict and how to deal, how to deal with it, but make sure that that conflict doesn't become a demotivator. Uh, make sure that you recognize work well done, you know, a pat on the back, um, a quick comment as you're walking from one end of the yard to the other, you know, motivating the crew with, with good positive comments um, is, is, a, is a great way to motivate. So don't ignore it and don't let it be a demotivator. Also, you know, just the opposite, you know, in terms of giving people responsibility that we talked about earlier, um, don't micromanage, you know, don't be on top of them the whole time. If you train them properly, use teachable moments, teach them those skill sets, you won't have to micromanage them. They will, they will know the right decisions and they will take responsibility. Um, also be very careful about wage disparity. And, and just the perception of wage disparity. We all know that we pay everybody differently based on their skill set, their time, um, you know, a lot of factors. So without being secretive, be very careful about uh, perceived wage disparity. Make sure that people are, are feeling like they're getting their fair shake. And I know that's easier said than done, but it's something that you wanna kind of stay on top of and, and be in tune with. So flip side of the coin and as opposed to things to avoid, to demotivate, things that you want to do and look for to motivate a crew is to empower them, train them well, train them properly, give them responsibility, give them um, jobs to do that are at their skill set, stretch them just a little bit each day so that they learn more, they feel better about what they learn, make sure that they're empowered to be and feel like they are a productive uh, member of a team. Find out what motivates them. Find out what their drivers are. Some of them like to uh, talk about, you know, their, their, their weekend activities, whatever they've been doing. Some of them like to talk about some of their passions, you know, hunting, fishing, uh, what, whatever, whatever their passions are, you know, music. You know, find out some things that drive them and, and make sure that you find ways to provide those triggers uh, through the day as well. And again, recognizing uh, jobs well done, recognizing achievements. If they've learned a new task or mastered a new climbing technique or they handle a new saw in a way that, uh, you know, that others haven't learned yet, make sure that, that they get recognized. Um, rewards are great. You know, sometimes it's, you know, hey, you get this job done. Uh, you know, in this amount of time, you get a bonus, you get this, you get that. But, and, and, and money is a good motivator, but make sure we use some of those intrinsic uh, uh, rewards as well. Just a little bit of added recognition, a little something to let them know that you're paying attention. And, and make sure that other team members, put other team members on the alert to look for those accomplishments as well. Um, you know, rewards and recognition don't just have to come from you. If you can motivate the crew to recognize each other, it just makes that day more meaningful. It makes the work more meaningful and, uh, you know, makes us safer and more productive. Um, you know, the idea of delegating responsibility. One of the ways to recognize achievement is to make sure that you give somebody um, some, some added responsibility so that when they accomplish a, a new task or accomplish something new, they feel good about it. They feel as though they're growing, they're progressing. Nobody wants to stand still and be stagnant. Um, others are more motivated about this than others. And you just have to learn to recognize which of those like that new added responsibility and how much of it they want. You know, you, you, you there's, there's, there's a skill that comes with knowing what types of things to give them to do and how much you can give them to do. But it certainly helps to give them a good feeling about their growth as an employee, their growth as an arborist. It helps to ease your workload. The more you delegate, the less you have to do. 
gives you time to check on another crew or check on something else on the job site, or maybe even gives you a chance to pick up a saw or climb a tree and do some work yourself as well. Everybody likes to hear that. Um, it also gives you time to accept new responsibilities. If you can delegate to others, it lets you be delegated to from whoever you're working for, whoever your boss is, uh, to accept new responsibilities and learn new skills. And it keeps you fresh and, and new as well. Um, but again, this idea of matching responsibility with the skill set that an employee has is just a great way to keep everybody fresh. Um, make sure that you match that delegation. Make sure you match that task with the employee. You know, you don't throw the biggest chainsaw you have in your newest employee, you know, or at your newest employee. You need to know where their skill levels are so that you know how much new responsibility is appropriate. And also how much of a jump that employee may want to, to, to take on. Like we said earlier, some love that, that big new jump. Others, maybe not. You know, you need, to, you need to take it a little slower. Make sure that when you delegate, that you look at it as a training opportunity. This is a chance for you to add another level of training. You know, the show, the uh, uh, tell do show or tell show do, um, it gives you a chance to give some clear instructions and make sure that they're ready to take on that responsibility. Um, I am guilty of this next one in the worst way. Um, don't be too specific when you're giving instructions. I'm, I'm an instruction nerd. I over explain um, and people correct me about it all the time. So don't be too specific. People will follow your instructions if they're given well. Once you delegate that authority and you give them that task to do, make sure that you monitor how they're doing. You can do it from afar. You may need to come up close and check on them. Uh, you don't have to stick, sit there right over their shoulder, but at least monitor to make sure that they're making some progress. And surprise, surprise, when you delegate a, a task to someone or, or a, a certain responsibility to someone, um, and you explain how you want it done, they might look at it and say, hey, I'm, I think I'm going to go at it this way. Here are some other approaches or ways to achieve that task. Be open to that. You know, you're the crew leader, but they may have some better ideas. And be open to that. Be open to those approaches. Um, if their approaches go too far or create an unsafe condition, explain to them why it may not be the best way to go and why it might be a safety issue. But, but again, communicate with them. Don't just tell them no. Um, after you delegate this, this task to them and they, they carry out the task, have a little debrief. You know, hey, how did it go? Are you comfortable with this new task? Is this something that I can assign to you in the future? Uh, a little debrief always goes a long way. Um, well, hey, the fun stuff. You know, um, we wish that every day would go great. We wish that uh, everybody would come to work happy and be supportive of one another. But uh, sometimes things happen. And sometimes it's related entirely to what's going on at the job. Sometimes it's because somebody brought something to work with them, you know, an attitude, something going on at home. Um, it certainly happens. You know, the, these days are very stressful. And so we need to be very aware of that. And sometimes we need to work to try to find the underlying reason for a conflict. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But dealing with conflict can be difficult. Most of us um, choose to try and avoid it. You know, if there's conflict, we just kind of steer the other way. But as a crew leader, you can't do that. As a crew leader, you need to be aware of it. You need to tune in and decide and determine whether it's just a minor or little you know, discussion between some employees or whether it's something that might need a little bit of inter intervention. So um, don't avoid it, you know, keep your, keep your eyes and ears on it and, um, and, and stay on top of it. It's best to try to engage early. Um, the longer you let it fume, the longer you let it go, the more of a problem or the more difficult it will be to try to untangle it. Um, and sometimes the conflict has nothing to do with 
hey, I don't want to have to carry this brush or I don't want to have to do that particular job. You know, I did it yesterday. It's your turn today. Sometimes there's underlying issues that bring things to the forefront that normally wouldn't be an issue. So you may have to look for some of those underlying issues as well. Um, if you do have conflict and you do choose to engage, there are some really, really simple steps about how to, how to deal with this crew conflict. So, you know, in this slide, I guess the idea is that we have maybe an employee that has a little body odor issue. I'm not sure what's going on there. But, um, you know, if an employee doesn't like working with another employee or if there's some sort of a conflict that's arising, as the crew leader, one of the things that you want to do first is to pull each of them aside one at a time. And you don't have to be super obvious about it. You can do it discreetly or quietly. Pull them aside. Listen to their issue. Listen to their complaint. Listen to their comments. Go do that with the other person. Listen to their comments. Listen to their issues. Listen to their side of the issue. Once you've had a chance to hear from each of them individually, then bring them together. And as you bring them together, explain to them, that there are some ground rules to this discussion. You want to make sure that each of them respects the other, make sure that each of them listens to what the other has to say during this, this brief moment that you bring them all together. You, you have to listen to each other and give each other a chance to describe their issue or describe their response without being interrupted by the other. You know, um, for those of you that watch any kind of news these days, you know, so many of the news stations and news channels, there's just conflict all the time, people interrupting one another. Make sure that doesn't happen in this kind of an environment. Keep it very calm. Make sure that each of them has a chance to talk without being interrupted. So each of them gets a chance to explain their point of view. When that's finished, um, you have the person who, you know, is, is the complainer, have them describe the other person's point of view. Maybe explain, well, maybe Joe thinks, of, thinks that way because of this, this, and this. And then the other person says, well, maybe Bob feels that way and he's doing this because this, this, and this. You know, maybe he doesn't like to drag brush after he's been in the tree all day because I get it, he's tired, he's been, in the, he's been climbing all day. And, and maybe the other guy is, well, you know, um, you know, I can understand why you don't like to drag brush every day. I mean, that's tiring as well. You know, maybe we can find a way to, to um, you know, work with each other and, and, and resolve this. So just make sure that they each have a chance to tell their side of the story and then have each of them explain the other person's point of view and why they might feel that way. Sometimes talking that out gives them a little empathy about why the other person feels the way that they do. And it also helps, helps them to find some common ground and some mutual things that they can do. Um, you know, I understand why you need me to do this because if I don't get this brush drug, you know, while you're climbing, uh, if I'm just sitting around, now we got a big pile of brush and it looks bad. It's more dangerous to untangle and feed into the chipper. You know, let, let them kind of work it out as they're talking to one another. And again, this is a pretty simple example. I, I realize some of these conflicts can get pretty messy. But sometimes what you can do is rather than you inflicting a resolution on them and saying, I, you know, I need for you to do this and this, sometimes you ask them to see if there are ways that this could be resolved and, and see if they can come up with something. They may not, they may have, you know, you may end up with this as being a, uh, a mutual disagreement on how things are going to be done. And then you may have to intervene with some instructions, but a lot of times just bringing people face to face, having them talk with one another like this and finding a way for them to hear each other out um, it, it, it makes it a lot easier to find some, some resolution for these problems. Um, you know, the, 
the, the, the perceived problem sometimes is way, way worse than the actual problem. So getting them face to face, letting them talk about these problems and letting them hear each other's uh, point of view can be very, very enlightening. And you'd be very surprised how easy it is to follow, uh, to follow those steps. Um, you know, again, just kind of quick review on this. You talk to each of the individuals, hear their side of the story, talk to them alone, and you don't have to just scream at them and call them over in front of the other one. You can do this very discreetly. You can find a time to, 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 to pull them aside one by one and talk to them. Um, if it's a safety violation, you may have to jump in right away. But uh, discreetly, just talk to each one of them, then bring them together, let each of them tell their story to the other side, um, hear what, you know, let, let them each hear what the other one has to say, and then let each of them describe the other person's point of view. And very often they will find this common ground and they will find that they are dependent on each other to get a job done, to get through the day and to be safe. And they will find a way, you, you may have to prod them a little bit, but they will find a way to resolve uh, this conflict or resolve this issue. Um, it takes time. This isn't something that is, is done in, in one or two minutes. But if it's a big conflict and it is allowed to carry on every day or over time, it can become very, very dangerous um, and very unproductive. So taking some time, taking 15 minutes or more to resolve this conflict can be time well spent. I know most of us get caught up in the day with continual production, continual production. But you'll find that the most effective crews, the most productive crews are the ones that are taking time to plot out a strategy for the day, to plan for the day, and to also plot out a strategy and plan for how they're going to um, deal with some of this resolution as well. And, you know, when this is all done, one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you um, make sure that you get this mutual agreement. Um, I'm, I'm, I just pulled up the chat. I apologize. I had it closed for a little bit and I'm seeing a, um, I'm seeing a, a, a question here that was asked um, a little while ago about what are the most common conflicts that you deal with. And I think most of you would probably agree. Um, yeah, and, and, and Michael, it looks like you responded pretty well. It's like crew members feeling like they always get the worst job. People, the biggest conflict is that people feel like, well, why do I have to do this kind of job? You know, why do I have to drag the brush every day? How come I have to carry the big logs? Um, you know, these other guys, you know, the prima donnas are in the tree all day, and then they come down and just want to sit, you know. Uh, that's probably the most common. Um, but you're, you're going to have to find a way to clearly describe what the expectations of certain employees are. And you're going to have to ask some of these folks to share some of those responsibilities. Yes, climbers do have to carry logs. Climbers do have to drag brush. Um, but sometimes they're paid a little differently. So, you know, you, you have to keep them busy doing the work that, that's at their their skill level and their and their their pay grade, but they can't ignore the other jobs that need to be done as, as well. So those types of conflicts are by far the most common. Um, the other conflict that we see a lot of times, quite honestly, is um, a crew member that feels that everybody should be working as hard as they are. Everybody should be working quickly. Um, and, you know, sometimes other, other crew members need to say, hey, man, you know, you need to chill out. You need to slow down a little bit. Um, we're, we're moving a little too fast here. We're not thinking straight in terms of safety. So making sure that everybody stays safe and, and works at the right level is um, another conflict that comes up. And I see that somebody commented on that. Bud, uh, uh, production over safety. Absolutely, that's true. Um, 
And, you know, and uh, Andrea, you nailed it as well. You know, most experienced person getting angry at the least experienced person for lack of understanding. And, and sometimes you need to pull those more experienced people aside. If they are great with a saw or they're great with the ropes or they're, they're great with a piece of equipment, they may not be the best communicator. So you need to talk to them and you need to explain to them that everybody on the crew has different skill sets, different levels. You know, share, share with the whole crew what we're talking about in this video, this idea of communicating. You don't have to love everybody on the crew, but you do have to communicate because if you don't communicate, people aren't going to be safe and people may not go home at the end of the day. And nobody wants that. So communication is absolutely critical. Um, and again, it's the soft stuff. It's sometimes people call it the touchy feely stuff. Well, you know what? We're, we're a lot of us are all about big saws and big equipment and big machines and, and, you know, big things, but sometimes we got to deal with the touchy feely. Sometimes we gotta, we gotta be able to do that in order to have everybody feeling like a team and, and operating well. Um, I see somebody else made a comment about equipment deficiencies. <laughs> you know, that's, that's another one, you know, yeah, I could do better work if the company bought better equipment. Um, you know, they, they, in crew conflicts, people will get a little impatient if they don't have good equipment. And sometimes that's something you can pass along to the, to the owner, you know, that, uh, hey, you know, I realize, you know, it's a, it's a big investment, but you've made an investment in us and uh, an investment in um, uh, equipment might, might be a good thing as well. Um, let's see, what other comments do we have? Experience means entitlement. Yeah, you know, again, that's where you gotta talk to your, your, you know, not just the new guys, you know, the new folks, the new employees and keeping them trained and getting them up to speed, but you gotta talk to the people with a lot of experience as well, because it doesn't necessarily mean entitlement. Um, they do have different jobs that you give them because you're paying them because they've learned those skills and they have certain, um, you know, experience and, and they're effective at certain things. But again, it's not entitlement, especially not entitlement to treat others on the team poorly. If anything, if you're paying them more because of higher skill levels, they need to have these skill levels as well, you know, the communication levels as well. So, again, some of this is the soft, touchy-feely stuff, but it's, um, it's, it's pretty important. Um, Tim, I see your comment about somebody saying they know more than they actually do. You know, that's, that's your job as a crew leader um, to make sure that people can kind of put their money where their mouth is in terms of their skill set because you, you don't want to – rely on someone that they know how to effectively operate a chipper and safely. And then you see them cramming stuff in from straight behind the chipper, you know, and, and pushing stuff in with, with other tools and so forth. Um, you know, you, you got to make sure they got to show you that, uh, that they have those skill sets. These are great comments, great comments. It shows that, um, that you all are getting something out of this. And, uh, and I appreciate you uh, sharing with everybody else. Um, so like I mentioned, this, this idea of resolving these crew conflicts, you know, it's, it's the toughest part of what we do. You know, we, most of us that get into this line of work, um, you know, we appreciate trees. We understand trees. We want to learn about trees. Uh, we want to learn about new tools and new techniques and new little widgets that are out there on the market, you know, and all these new fangled things that companies have and new equipment, new machines, you know, that's kind of what gets us jazzed. But, you know, this, this idea of communicating with people is just as important as everything else that we do at our job. If we're not good at creating a team and if we're not good at having people bought into the concept of team, um, we're, we're just not going to be successful. We are not going to be successful. And, um, you know, at the crew leader level, if, if we're not successful in resolving these conflicts and we think that it's something pretty serious that's going to have some, some, you know, potential safety 
uh, impact or some big repercussions in terms of somebody quitting, uh, make sure you go to the next level. Make sure you go to the supervisor, the company owner, depending on how big your company is. I realize a lot of you as crew leaders, you are the company owner. So, you know, you, you, you have that responsibility. There's absolutely no doubt. Um, so with that, um, you know, quick review, uh, this idea of, of morale, you know, this idea of uh, being an effective leader and creating good morale on, the, on your crew, make sure that you show respect. Treat people like human beings. Make your expectations clear. Be fair. Um, not everybody's perfect. You know, acknowledge mistakes. Everybody's going to goof up. Um, uh, make sure that, and, and, and again, it just sounds so hokey sometimes, but make sure that, that you encourage this idea of teamwork. Because if your crew operates as a team, your job as a crew leader becomes that much easier. They're going to look out for each other. You, may, you won't have to look out for them as much. Or the way that you look out for them will be very different. Um, and always look for ways to make things better. No matter how good you're, you're working and cranking things out, um, find ways to make it even better. And ask the crew, how do we make this better? We're really cranking. You know, this week was great. Um, everybody's really humming along. Um, how do we keep this going? How do we, how do we make this keep happening? What, what did we do this week that was working? What can we do better to make this even better? Uh, keep looking for those types of things. Uh, in the dope column, you know, don't micromanage, don't lean over them, don't um, every little thing type of type of deal. You, you just don't want to do that. Um, trying to uh, be very cognizant of their limitations. You know, if, uh, if you don't understand the limitations that a particular crew member has, you're going to give them the wrong job to do. And, and that's not a good thing. Um, and when you do assign a job or assign a task to someone, Make sure that they understand what the limitations are. You know, um, if they're going to be making some decisions and take on some responsibility, um, make sure that they understand where those boundaries are. Um, you know, the idea of showing favoritism to an, uh, a, a crew member. You know, it's great if somebody's really shining and you're giving them praise all the time. That's great, but you know. It, it, some, sometimes that'll create a little burnout with some of the other crew members. They're going to see that, uh, you know, you got your favorite and um, that, that, that's not good. Um, always be open to new ideas. Even when those, those ideas come from your crew members, you're the crew leader, but they have a lot to offer. They may be seeing things that you're not seeing. So listen to their ideas. Um, and again, the idea of conflicts, Make sure that you get in on that as quickly as you can and that you, um, that you are there to, uh, um, uh, you know, jump in on those conflicts as quickly as you can. Um, let me pull up the comments here again and see if we have any other uh, sharing. Uh, I'm having trouble finding the comments. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So, Bob, I don't know if you're ready to, to jump back in. Um, and I will. Here's the chat. Let's see if we have some other questions in here. Um, supervisor, crew, foreman, conflict. conflict. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, the different levels of leadership that you have in your country, your company can sometimes create some issues as well. It's like, who's truly in charge? Who's, who's leading the show here? Um, and again, just good communication about, um, you know, hey, this is the guy that assigns the crews the jobs, but this is the person who's there, you know, she's on the job with you guys and, and you know, running the crew during the day. Uh, make sure everybody understands their role and, and, uh, and their expectations. It just, it makes everybody happy. Um, I don't see many other questions. If there are some questions, feel free to pop them up there. I think we got a few minutes left. 
wanted to build in enough time for questions and comments. Um, if, if any of you are interested in this uh, crew leader qualification, you know, going to one of these classes, um, I, I've taught several of them so far, and I can tell you that with al almost without fail, the majority of people that come into those classes say, you know, I came in here and I really didn't know what to expect, but this has been one of the best sessions that I've been through, you know, in terms of, of picking up skills. So think about, you know, look for this on the, on the TCIA website. Think about signing up for uh, the class once we start going live with it again. Um, and if you can't do that, you know, we have some more of these webinars coming up. I think Bob's going to talk about it. Um, and we'll, um, we'll go from there. I see a couple of thank yous on there. Thank you for showing up today, folks. Um, certainly appreciate your time. And uh, Phil, Pete, uh, Sandra, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Skip. Um, as Skip was saying, uh, this is part of the Crew Leader uh, webinar series. Uh, I'm sorry, the Crew Leader Workshop. Um, and uh, typically during this portion, uh, we also have activities. So the participants will actually do some uh, role playing and try to work on some of those uh, crew conflict solving skills. And they'll work on that uh, little example that uh, Skip gave on uh, uh, one method to reduce crew conflict uh, where you take them aside separately and have them individually explain their issues and then bring them back together. So they, during the workshop, they'll actually uh, role play that and try to work on that. Um, and it, it just leads to great conversations. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that uh, once we uh, have those on our website uh, for the upcoming year, uh, they will be published there and you can uh, look for one in your area. Um, I saw one, uh, Quick question from or comment from Tim Brogan about uh, the the folks who think they know more than they actually do, and uh, th that can lead to a lot of conflict. And I, I can't remember if this is from our crew leader series or somewhere else, but there is something uh, there is a curve uh, that kind of e explains how that's pretty common. It, and um, it's kind of a growth curve. It's pretty common for a new person to come in in the perception of themselves when they come in, they know nothing. It's like, hey, I know nothing. I need to learn stuff. But they'll hit that six month to, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt effect. Uh, they'll hit that six month to uh, um, two to three year period where they start to learn a few things and they overestimate how much they know and they think they know more. And it's almost like being a teenager on the crew. It's, <laughs> uh, they know everything and uh, can create a lot of conflict. And then it generally comes back down after that point, they start assessing themselves more accurately, but that's something you can help them through. I believe we talked a little bit about that during the crew leader uh, workshop. So the upcoming webinars are uh, May 6th, 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, so next Wednesday and May 13th, uh, the Wednesday after, we're, we're doing uh, a couple more improving performance and effective communication with crews and climate uh, and clients. Um, and uh, also um, the webinar series plan, uh, it's, it's gonna be up on our website uh, you can go to Zoom. You can go to this uh, link here and register, but it's also on our website. Um, it's on tcaa.org and uh, events and education and events. So tcaa.org uh, slash education and events. And uh, you can um, uh, find our, our webinar page under that as well. So, uh, I encourage you all to go there. There's other webinars we offer as well. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. I hope this was helpful. And um, I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you next, next week. And uh, have a safe and productive week. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bob.